and we're coming to one of the highlights of the day now the first of our groups and it is the utility group which is just about to start and the dogs will be coming into the arena any moment and I welcome Jessica home who's going to be commentating with me as we await these wonderful utility dogs who are coming into the ring delighted to be here for the first of our groups for Crufts 2016 but before the dogs come in, of course, we have to introduce a very pleasant job of introducing our judge. She's approved to award trans degrees in 17 utility degrees, plus seven further degrees across three further groups. And the judge extends degree throughout Canada, the United States of America. The ring announcer just uh, about to do the same introduction. She's introducing, or he's introducing, uh, so with the background, but this is our judge coming into the ring now. Mary Dietz. Stepping forward from the uh, front bench there, uh, being taken into the ring there, escorted by Anne MacDonald, who's the vice chair of the Crufts Committee. And she's going to have the task of judging these rather splendid dogs that are just about to come into the ring. Mary Dietz was born in America, but she's lived and worked in the UK since 1974. And this is a dream job for her. Please give a very warm reception to the winner of the four bit of classes, which is over its weekly experience. Now we have a lap of honour, first of all, for the winner of the imported register classes, not competing in the group, but this is a Mexican hairless Angel Crest Skyfell who won through from the imported register classes. A breed that goes all the way back to the Aztecs, this one, known as the God Dog. Revered and used almost completely solely as a bed warmer. No coat at all, the Mexican hairless, winner of the imported register. And here comes the first of our utility dogs, the Akita. Followed by the smart brindle and white of the Boston Terrier. And the unmistakable sight of the Bulldog. Super round of applause. One of the rarest in this group, the Canaan Dog. And there we have the Chow Chow. Instantly recognisable, the carriage dog, the Dalmatian. And the Eurasia. A very recently developed breed. The delightful clown, the little French bulldog. And the smaller, the German Spitz, the German Spitz Klein. Followed by the slightly larger Mittel. And the Japanese Akita Inu. The Japanese Shiba Inu. Followed by the smaller Shiba Inu. The Japanese Spitz. And the Japanese Spitz. The Kazon. The Kazon. The Koika Honda. And the Dutch dog, the Koika Honda. The Lars Absen. The Laza Apso, a breed that's produced a previous Crufts Best in Show winner, of course. The miniature Schnauzer. The first of the three sizes of Poodle, this one the miniature. Followed by the standard Poodle. This, of course, a much larger version, the standard Poodle. Always spectacular. And the diminutive little toy Poodle. The Skipper Key. The Schnauzer. The middle of the Schnauzer sizes, just called the Schnauzer. The and the Sarpe. The Shih Tzu. The Shih Tzu. The Tibetan Spaniel. And the Tibetan Spaniel. And finally, the Tibetan Terrier. 
Last but not least, the Tibetan Terrier, full of joie de vie, this one. A very impressive collection of utility dogs. And there we have that wonderful lineup. The dogs complete their circuit. And the first glance that Mary Dietz has had to be able to see these dogs as they come in, each one. And now she's going to take an opportunity to walk along the breed line. She'll take a first look at them all before looking at them all closer and individually. An exciting time for the judge. Every judge is, is wanting a good group, some lovely best of breed winners to try and sort out and of course come up with the first of our winners for 2016. It must be an exciting time to walk down and get a first look at those best of breed winners. It'll be interesting to see what she, the kind of dog she goes with here because she grew up with German Shepherd dogs and Skipper Keys. Of course, we have Skipper Key in this group and Brittany's and that was uh, in America. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see what kind of line she may look for and enjoy here. Though she'll enjoy them all, no doubt. She's owned French Bulldogs and a German Spitz. And of course, every one of these best of breed winners has defeated all the others of his kind to earn the privilege of being here. So they're all winners, really. What we've got to sort out here is the best of the best. Of course, you, schnauzer. you have experience of being in this ring, Jess. I mean, it is a glorious moment for any breeder, isn't it, and any owner? Oh, absolutely, but your heart is thumping at the most unbelievable rate by the time you're standing there being appraised by the judge. Well, Mary D. really taking a good look at this group, which is absolutely splendid to see. Well, once she's completed her tour of the ring, which she has just done, the first dog is waiting there for her, so she'll go to look at the Akita. She walks over to it now. So here we have the Akita. This is Curtis, a three-and-a-half-year-old dog. Comes from Norway, handled in the ring by Richard Hellman. Best of breed at the World Dog Show. It's a multi-best in show winner, this one. It's a very loving and funny dog. Loves people and being out on the road. So there you go, that's what the owner says. Most popular breed in his native Japan, the Akita. Used, of course, originally both for guarding and for fighting, as well as hunting big prey, things like bear and boar, as well as deer. Characteristic spitz type with that curled tail, but spectacular in form. Smart outline of the Boston Terrier, smooth coated and compact. This is Gabe, a three year old dog. Dark brindle and white markings are very characteristic of this breed, which of course hails originally from the United States, developed in Boston. We're looking for a deep body, a square, flat top skull, super smart little dog, this. And he's rightly called the Yankee Doodle Dandy, this one. Bred in uh, the United States, a mix of bull and terrier types producing this dog originally. Good tempered, happy house dogs, a little bit boisterous, I'm told. I've never lived with one, so I don't know. But. <laughs> and you can see the bulldog ancestry there in the shape of the head, but with those prick ears on top, smart on the move, easy and graceful. It's a real eye catcher. The Boston Terrier. The Boston Terrier, three And here we have the Bulldog. This is Edward. He's a four year old dog, owned by Alberto uh, Gonedles from Spain. And uh, Alberto's handling in the ring there. There's one. Competitions, obviously, in Spain and Italy. 
He reckons he is the best. Well, we'll see whether he's the best today, but he's uh, certainly the best of the Bulldogs that were here today, which is absolutely splendid to see. Lovely, lovely animal. First classified this breed as far back as the 1630s. What we're looking for is a broad, deep, short-faced dog. They are massive because, of course, originally they were used for fighting bulls. Wide set, round eyes. That rising top line, very characteristic from the shoulder up to the, the rear end. They give an appearance that they're being slow and sluggish, but they ain't. They can get a real race on when they want. And the most fantastic characters, bulldogs. This is Tiras, who's come from Wiltshire to compete at Crufts today, the national dog of Israel, this the Canaan dog, bred originally as a guard. Classic spitzy triangle face, pointed pricked ears, strong and square to look at. One of the rarest in this group, this the Canaan dog. Really, a, a feral dog from the Middle East. Very distinct breed type now, and most attractive. I love those markings, I think they're just terrific. It's an energetic dog with a natural ease about it, but wary, of course, as a guard. Characteristic spitz face and those pricked ears. And there we see the Chow Chow. This is an 11-month-old dog called Tuffy, very, very young, just a puppy. Arlene Robinson is the owner, comes from Barnsley in the UK, and is handling there in the ring. This is only this dog's third show. I said it's a puppy. So he's cheeky, and we like his naughtiness. He's very lovable, a very distinctive uh, tongue. And this one really did beat all comers. I think the open dog class, there were 19, 17 of which were champions, and yet this puppy's come out on top of them all. That really is quite remarkable, isn't it? The characteristic rolling gait of the chow chow, and just look at that blue tongue. Two hundred and twenty eight Dalmatians competed at Crufts this year. A dog nobody would ever mistake with those characteristic spots which come in either black or liver. Distinctive appearance, a racy Regency carriage dog. These have the most beautiful athletic outline. Smooth and powerful and a long stride on the move. You want those spots to be separated, not running together too much. I'm talking running together, these dogs are nicknamed marathon runners because they have incredible endurance, very sporting side to their nature, active, agile, strong and muscular. That's the Dalmatian. Always that proud carriage with a head carried on a lovely long arched neck. Should be really free striding. And this is the Eurasia. This dog, or rather this bitch actually, is nine years old, known as Callie. Uh, Mrs. Hopkinson from Wakefield uh, owns it. And the most important wins to date today is winning a best of breed. So it's a recently developed breed in Germany. Uh, thought that the regeneration of the, uh, of the Russian breed called the Leica is where this has come from. But the immediate forebears are the Chow Chow, the German Wolf Spit, and a little bit of Samoyed as well. So it's a very interesting breed, deliberately bred. Some 12 years old, introducing the Savoyed into this mix, we found the newly named Eurasia. 
And you can see the Spitz type in the wedge-shaped head, triangular ears, and that plume of a tail carried over the dog's back. Beautiful, weatherproof coat, very profuse. Another breed with over 200 competing at Crufts, so popular now, the French Bulldog. This one is an American champion that's come to compete from the USA and Venezuela as well. Originally, this breed was miniaturized from the Bulldog, and you can see that ancestry in every fiber of its being. Exported to France, which was where lace makers developed it further, it has the most fantastic clown-like nature, a real companion dog. And those bat ears, they're a very distinctive feature of the breed. It adds to that rather droll expression that he has. <laughs> Medium to small-sized dog, come in three colours, brindle, pied and fawn. It's very easy to keep clean, that coat. Yes, no other colours are acceptable other than brindle, pied or fawn in this country. The little French bulldog. Well, this is the German Spitz Klein, that's the small version of the Spitz. This is Jen, a six-year-old bitch, uh, owned by Del Francis and uh, Gary Pierce. They come from Middlesbrough, and uh, Mr. Del Francis is handling in the ring. One best in shot Blackpool this year, and the Scottish Kennel Club in 2014. And they say this is a dream dog who likes to make herself heard, one in a million dog. The Klein should not be more than 23 to 29 centimetres, and uh, that really is quite a tiny dog. Smart mover should be an effortless, brisk action as the little dog trots round the ring there, watching every move of the owner. And for such a small dog, it's, it's got a, a great air of importance, I always think. They, you know, they know that they ought to be in the ring. And that coat is what's called double, so it's soft and woolly underneath with a long, harsh top coat which stands away and gives them such a characteristic appearance. And this is the next size up, the middle. Between 30 and 38 centimetres, the middle size, but we're looking for a dog that should be compact, quite short-backed, and the judge will put the hands on to feel what's going on underneath all that coat, because, of course, it can be hugely deceptive. The breed's almost square to look at, but very definitely spitz type with that wedge-shaped triangle of a head, the plume of a tail, and the plush coat standing off. Gorgeous, rounded, little cat-like feet these um, German Spits have, and they can come in all colours. Nice, independent dog with a happy outlook on life. Makes an ideal pet, quite capable of living with old and young alike. I love Janet and A.D. Chambers' description of this particular little dog as kiss <laughs> The German Spitz Mittel. Well, you've seen the Akita, but this is the Japanese Akita Inu, separated from the Akita in the UK as recently as 2006, following the division of the two breeds in most other countries. This one is called Saisi, it's a three-year-old dog. Uh, the owner is William Ferrari from Italy, and Gaia Danesi is handling there in the ring. This is the world winner, best of breed in 2015, and has also been an Italian and Croatian champion. You can see it's very different, actually, from the Akita, but uh, it seems to be nearer to the type that the Akita always was. Yeah, slightly lighter in frame and perhaps with a, a more oriental expression in that face and, of course, much more restricted in the colours and markings. You don't get the black mask that you do with the other. 
This is a loyal dog, very much a family dog, but a good guard and wary of strangers. Instantly recognisable, this little one, the Japanese Shiba Inu, means small dog. This is Leo, owned by Liz Dunhill from Retford and showed by her daughter in the ring today. Always alert on the point of their expectation, these little dogs. That coat is hard and straight, soft to the touch, with dense undercoat, and comes in red, black, black and tan, or brindle. This one, of course, a red. Yes, the uh, Shiba Inu originates in the mountains and inland areas of Japan. The work being that of a hunting dog, mainly of ground game, because they're not particularly big, these dogs. Should like, look like a smaller version of the Akita, and of course it does. Lovely, light, quick, energetic on the move. Always alert, beautifully handled. The Japanese Shiba Inu. And this little Spitz dog is the Japanese Spitz. He's called Romeo, he's only 18 months old. Uh, judged by Zena Thorne Andrews today, owned by Messrs Bowen, Bradley and Aston from Staffordshire. And uh, Kennedy Bradley is actually handling in the ring, one of the owners. Junior world winner in 2015, has won in Milan, uh, won at Windsor, or rather took group three in Windsor. He's had four CCs, so a cheeky, charming and successful show dog, this Japanese Smiths. And this breed so characterised by that gorgeous, crisp white coat, contrasted with the black pigment of eyes, nose and lips, and of course black pads on the undersides of the feet as well. Light and nimble on the move, very active, energetic dogs, most of these Spitz types, and also they never stop talking. And that coat takes a fair bit of looking after as well, needs attention on a regular basis, you don't leave it. <laughs> The Japanese Spitz. This is the Kazehon, the Dutch barge dog. Sturdy, intelligent, almost fox-like in the head with those pointed ears and that lovely mix of grey and black in the coat. Very, very characteristic with shoulder markings, almost like a harness. Short and compact, this dog, square in outline, but again with those cat-like, lovely little tight feet. Prick ears and such a super expression on this breed. Yes, full of activity and I'm told full of noise as well. <laughs> they, uh, it's a pretty hardy dog, able with that great coat to be able to withstand the worst of temperatures. And he'll take all the exercise you want to give him. And although it has that fantastic soft undercoat, when you touch the top coat, it's quite harsh. Lovely black mask too, which gives them such a characteristic expression. The K's on. The K's on, yes. Now this is the Koika Honda. Uh, very compact, small breed from the Netherlands. Freya is this bitch's name. She's four years old, owned by Emma Jane Suter from Dursley in Gloucestershire. Uh, Christina Suter is actually handling in the ring. Won best puppy, puppy here at Crufts in 2013 and took best of breed here in 2014. They say her personality is that of a princess and they love everything about her, apart from uh, being woken up every morning at 5 a.m. Well, there you go. It's a sturdy, deep-chested little breed, this, and that coat is of medium length. It should be straight or perhaps with a very slight wave and, of course, characteristic in colour. It's quite close-fitting, though, because this was a dog designed to work around water and around ducks. It needs to be weatherproof and keep it warm. That's it, the Koika Honda. Now, this is the Laza Apso. 
This one belongs to Derek Dungate and Tim Minton. They come from Sussex. Might look all glitz and glamour, this breed, but the Laza Apso is a really hardy little dog wearing a jacket designed to protect it from the Tibetan winter, so no messing about here. That coat is weatherproof and really protects the dog. The hair should fall so as not to obscure the sight, and you can see dark eyes and a dark nose. Yes, when they were first uh, seen here in this country, they were confused with other shaggy oriental dogs, and they were all labelled Lhasa Terriers. But later the distinction was made, especially between the Apso and the Tibetan Terrier, which is thought to have been behind the early Apsos. Very independent dog, quite stubborn, wary of strangers, but loving and affectionate to friends and family. Longer in the body, this one, with that tail carried nice and high like a plume over the back. Nice, free, jaunty movement, too. The Laza Apso. Oh, what a lovely picture. On the table, then, the miniature Schnauzer. This dog is five years old. He's called Jazz. He's owned by Mrs. Laura Burns from Truro in Cornwall. 26 cc's, been Group 4 twice, and the top miniature in, 19, in 2012 and 2013. These are very happy, outgoing dogs. Derived from the Schnauzer, and also, it's believed, the Affenpinscher. There's a miniature and a standard version, and a giant Schnauzer, of course. These are such super little dogs. They've got fantastic characters. They're great guards, wonderful family dogs, just want to please. This one's pepper and salt. And then, of course, they also come in black, in white, and in black and silver. But the pepper and salt is the most popular color. The coat on the body is hand stripped so that it's lovely and harsh and with more profuse coat on the legs. And, of course, those characteristic beard, moustache, and great eyebrows. Yes, you think that it wouldn't need grooming with a coat that short, but they do. They require oh, they daily certainly grooming. Do. Now, this is the first of our poodle varieties. This, the miniature, has come all the way from Russia to compete at Crufts. Most people, when they look at poodles, all they think about is the hairdo, and that is such a mistake to make. These are wonderful dogs, great characters, hugely energetic, fit for function, proud and elegant. They're joyous in nature, and the coat is only one aspect of a truly wonderful dog and a great companion to live with. This particular one has been a Russian champion, Finnish champion, Israeli champion, multiple group and best in show winner. And I was hoping, Jess, you were going to name the owner, who's uh, Olga Akipova and Nadeza Mashkatuko. Get that. Well, so I've Russian. been doing this for long enough to know not to do that. <laughs> ah, you chicken. <laughs> That's what we're looking for in the poodle, the proud elegance of the movement. They strut their stuff, they own the ring. The miniature poodle. And now we have the standard poodle. This is Lex, who's a five-year-old dog and is owned by Camilla Tell, Brett Hamilton and Charlotte Sandell. And uh, it's come from Sweden, actually, this dog. And, uh, well, the standard for the standard poodle is the same as that for both the miniature and the toy. They're just different in size, but they're pretty identical dogs. Very, for the fashion conscious, there are many different ways in which they can be shown and clipped. There's And, of course, they we've seen two black poodles here. They come in such a spectacular range of colours. Beautiful movement there. This standard poodle looks like it wants to own the ring. And they're always hugely popular at the show here because it's a spectacular dog. 
highly presented and it, it really is marvellous to see them on the move. So that's the largest of our poodle varieties, the standard poodle. Followed by the cutest and the smallest. This is the toy poodle, another black. As I said, the smallest of the three sizes, but not to be denied in terms of character, the toy poodle. I live with one of these at home, and uh, she owns the place, basically. This one comes from Taunton in Somerset and belongs to Beryl and Sandra Godfrey. The toy poodle has a And the characteristic clip for the breed leaving longer hair on the back end than you do on the standard poodle, more like the miniature in clip. It's interesting that the French know the poodle as a duck dog. And uh, the small ones here, they were used to snuff out truffles, something I didn't know actually, I discovered that only the other day. Very versatile, excels in obedience. Very intelligent dogs. And of course, that profuse coat is non-shedding and uh, hypoallergenic. So if you want a dog that isn't going to cause asthma and sneezes, a poodle is your dog. The smallest of the varieties, the toy poodle. Well, this is one of the small of the Spitz type dogs. This is the Skipperkey originates from the canals of Belgium and the Netherlands. The pet name of this one is Marvin. He's only uh, 18 months or 20 months old and is owned by Pier Jalameri. He come from Finland. Been best in show uh, junior in Lithuania, has had group three junior in Finland and has been a Finnish junior winner in 2015 as well. Perhaps a little unsettled on the table. Let's see if this one settles down on the move. Typical foxy face, perhaps a little broader and flatter in the skull than some of the spits, but with those typical pricked ears. And we do normally see Skipper Key in black, but of course they can come in other whole colours too. I find it fascinating, actually. It's a very ancient breed. It's uh, credited with the first one-breed dog show, which was pulled on by Guild Workmen in Holland in 1690. For goodness sake, that is uh, a breed with some history, the Skipperkey. Now the middle size of the three Schnauzer varieties. This is the Schnauzer. This dog should give you an impression of strength, particularly when you compare it to the miniature that we saw earlier, but you should never lose the balance for that. You want a strong dog, but you don't want it overdone. The same eyebrows and moustache. That top coat is coarse and his hand stripped. Harsh to the touch. And more profuse coat on the legs. This is a breed that obviously originates uh, in Germany. And this, uh, the standard Schnauzer has many roles. It's been a ratter, it's been a drover's dog, a stock tender, and a guard both in the house and in the stables. They've even been used to pull carts uh, to market. Good all lower, round farm dog. Lower numbers for, for this particular variety. We see less Schnauzers than we do either miniature Schnauzers or, of course, the Giants, which are not in this group. Well, this, if you could see past the hands, there is the Sarpe. This uh, is Jimmy. He's a two-year-old dog. Mark Bragg, who comes from Plymouth, owns and handles there. He's won three CCs, one best of breed. Three reserve CCs. He's a big softy, I'm told. Loves everybody. But one of the Sarpe's most distinctive features is the bristly feel to the coat, which may be black, red or fawn, and cream. And this unique, rough, harsh coat is a major feature. 
characterized, of course, by that large head and by loose, slightly wrinkled skin, which gives them a wonderful frowning expression. All solid colors are allowed, this one of black. We've seen the change in this breed over the years. Those wrinkles have got much less pronounced. It's a very smart looking dog there. Square in outline, deep chested. This is a powerful dog despite its medium size. The Shih Tzu. Like the Lhasa Apso, the Shih Tzu hails from Tibet, but he's a bit of a heavier dog, characterized by the hair on the face growing in what they call a chrysanthemum pattern. Large, dark, round eyes. There's such a warm expression. These are great companion dogs. The coat is long and dense. It should be flat on the top, and the undercoat shouldn't be too profuse so that that flat top coat falls beautifully. And the roots of the breed obviously are in Tibet. It was uh, developed in China, however, where dogs like these lived in the imperial palaces. These breed really didn't find its way into the West until about the early 19, oh, I know, 1912, 1920, that sort of time. Granted separate register by the Kennel Club in 1940. Another one that's quite long in the body. Short, powerful little legs carry him round the ring with a plumed tail always carried up over the back. Another of our Tibetan breeds, the Shih Tzu. The penultimate entry in the utility group. This is Lexi, a two-year-old bitch, the Tibetan Spaniel. Uh, she's owned by Penny Smith from Burhead, Mori in uh, Scotland, a lovely part of the world. And this one has won back-to-back -back tickets, Scottish Kennel Club and now uh, and Windsor. That's uh, in 2015, both of those. One of the first Tibetan breeds to reach the UK, the Tibetan Spaniel. Delightful temperament, somewhat haughty expression on the face. And you can see as you look at the dog there that it has a relatively small head and the skull should be slightly domed with high-set, well-feathered ears which frame the little dog's face. Its feet are almost like a hair, small and neat, but with feathers that come forwards. And that intelligent expression. Such a super little pet dog as well. They make wonderful companions which Look at was, that. of course, their original function. And that fantastic coat as well. Lovely, gleaming, silky texture. Not that hard to keep in good condition, too. Moving it's very soft. Now, the final dog of this group has come all the way from Germany to compete with Sabine and Katja Raoul. This is the Tibetan Terrier. A bit of a misnomer as this breed was originally a herd and a guard rather than a, a ratter or a terrier. What we're looking for with this breed is a squareness in outline. They should be sturdy, medium sized, lively and a really good natured dog. Under that coat you've got large round eyes, V-shaped pendant ears that hang down and really strong jaws. There's no messing about with this little fella. This, of course, is the tallest dog of the group. He needs a pretty firm hand uh, to look after him, but he'll reward his owners with loyalty and devotion. That coat's of sort of moderate length. The original holy dog of Tibet. There's a fine woolly undercoat underneath there. The mountains of Tibet, well, you might think it's cold in Birmingham sometimes, but it's, it, they, these dogs really need weather protection and profuse and fine, straight or slightly wavy top coat that locks in the heat. So the last of our utility group finalists, this is the Tibetan Terrier.
So Mary Dietz has now taken a close look. She's had her hands on the entire collection that she has in front of her. Now she's got a decision to make. So she'll take another look along the line. She's starting with the Tibetan Terrier now looking back along the line. It's quite a difficult task, but I think we've seen a magnificent little group of animals there today, some really spectacular dogs. So the first to come out is the Chow Chow and the Dalmatian. The little German Spitz Klein. The Laza Apso. The smallest of the poodle varieties, the toy and the skipper key. The Schnauzer. So as we watch now, the eight that Meredith has picked out are lining up. And those who didn't make it beyond the group are leaving the ring. They've been marvelous to have got this far. They'll be very proud of themselves. So we're taking a look at these dogs again as they uh, are going to be paraded by so this one's a, a German Spitz Mittel? Uh, no, no Klein, the Klein, the smaller variety. The and now we have the Dalmatian. Dalmatian. So this is the wonderful shortlist that Meredith has picked out. We've got the German Spitz Klein and the Dalmatian here. And the Chow Chow, this is the puppy, of course, this very young dog, just 11 months old. Tuffy, he's called. And now we have the Japanese Shiba Inu. This is owned by Liz Dunhill, and uh, her daughter Melanie is there showing. So alert, moving beautifully. Now we have the Laza Apso. This is Ford, owned by Derek Dungate and Tim Minton. On now to the little black toy poodle. Yes, this is Erica. She's 22 months old. We've got a lot of young dogs in here. And the seventh of the shortlisted dogs in the utility group is the Skipper Key. The Skipper Key, not surprising this, which uh, a favourite breed of uh, Mary Deets. This is Marvin, again, just 20 months old. And the last of our finalists, we have the Schnauzer, Bujan Independent Climax, Uma. A pepper and salt Schnauzer. Another young one again, 20 months old. So Mary Dietz just reminding herself by moving them again of what she liked about each of these best of breed winners. And now she has to sort them out and choose the first of our group winners for Crush 2016. for the board, so the boards are coming out into the ring. So that means she's made her decision. 
So where is she going to go with this lovely lineup? Going straight over to the German Spitz Klein, it is. My word, this is champion long sales, Jen, you win. Six-year-old bitch. Owned by Mr. Dale Francis and Mr. Gary Pierce from Middlesbrough. They've won the group. Second in the group and goes to the Marino taking uh, group two. Third goes to the Toy Poodle, Aiden Talk of the Town, Erica for Beryl and Sandra Godfrey. And the latter Apso gets group four. Mary Dietz managed to resist choosing the skipper key. And <laughs> she's got a lovely selection there. But group one, make no mistake, the winner of the group, the German Spitz Klein. As you've just heard, probably His Excellency Dominic Fergler, Swiss Ambassador to the Court of St. James, uh, is going to be the presenter and uh, presenting the uh, award there. He's been escorted into the ring by Ben Hanney. And I think Mary Dietz did a marvellous job with a lovely group, a fascinating group to see, and I think possibly a very, very good choice. That's lovely, look at that. In Group 2, there's the Japanese Shiba Inu there. Of course, the Vormund Kennel, very famous in this breed. Many, many top credits to their name. And this is Leo, just two years old, taking Group 2 at Crufts with Michaela Dunhill, breeder Liz Dunhill's daughter, handling. Look at that inscrutable expression. He knows he should be there, doesn't he? Have you travelled far to get here to Crafts today? Three and a half hours. Where from is that? Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough. Yes. Okay. You're back on Sunday night for Best in Show. Another fantastic experience. How do you think you're going to prepare for that? The best I can. <laughs> well, well done. I'm sure you'd like to do your lap of honour, just so everybody can show their appreciation and congratulate the winner of the Utility Group, Crafts 2016. The German six climb. So there they go on their lap of honour. Dale Francis there, leading the little Jen, the six-year-old German Spitz Klein bitch, around the ring for the lap of honour. Best in show in Blackpool and at the Scottish Kennel Club from 2014. Now, best in the group here at Crufts 2016, 125th anniversary of this fantastic show. That's our first group of what's been a very exciting first day here at the NEC. Another group to follow, the toy group.